Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Splash Your Paint, brought to you in association with the SAA Society for All Artists. Today's programme is bursting with 60 colourful minutes of all the latest tips, demonstrations and exercises to help you inspire your artistic passion and encourage you to try something new. Let's get started and take a closer look at what creative treats are coming up on today's packed programme. Multi-talented artist Murray Ince returns to demonstrate some basic techniques to help you get started in pastels. We're going to the garden to take a closer look at the vibrant world of mixed media with colourful artist Jan Gardner. And we'll be shining our introducing spotlight on the work of versatile SAA artist and teacher Mo Chu. But before all that, let's go out and about and see how I got on when I took my tablet out for a morning of digital sketching. Hi there folks and welcome to Cookney in Derbyshire. What a brilliant place for painting and drawing. I've got my tablet computer and my stylus, so I'm going to show you something a bit different and give you a few tips and tricks on how to do some painting in a digital form. Let's get started. So using the tablet computer is a nice thing because you don't need to have all the uh, brushes and water and paint. For me, it's more of a sketching tool than anything else. This particular app is available. It's one of the most popular ones out there. We click on the plus and this will give us the chance to actually get a new document, which we can start off. And it comes up as a white piece of paper like you'd expect. Using more than one finger, you can pinch to zoom out and, and expand your fingers to go in, which is very useful. So I like to start off, if you're doing landscapes, by getting a bit of a sky. But what I thought I'd do to start with is just show you one or two tips and tricks on how you can actually use a stylus compared to your finger, maybe. The first thing to mention, of course, is colour. Bottom left corner is a little black and white rectangular shape. If we click on this, you've got a colour wheel. So if we're doing a blue sky, you scroll this round towards the blues, and you loosely guess, so we're talking this kind of sort of pale, kind of cyan blue. The large square at the side is where you move the tiny spot and you choose the actual colour that you want. So normally at the top right corner is the most intensive colour. So we'll go for that. This slider is the actual opacity and that is going to be your best friend when using the application. You start off quite high, probably around two thirds to three quarters across. And then we click away and then we get the screen. Right at the bottom we've got a slider which is the brush size and you can see it increasing as you move this from side to side. So smaller for doing detail and of course larger for doing a big background wash. These two options, this is the brush or the eraser. Because I've got nothing to erase I'm working with the brush. This little scroll is the, the actual brush type. Now when you first use the program there's various ones pre-installed but you can change the settings yourself. The standard one is at the top, which is just a normal soft brush. Now, these numbers are the size of the actual brush, which doesn't really matter at this point. But we'll click on this one, and we'll click on Edit. And then it gives us options of hardness, which is quite important. If it's on full, which is 100, it's a very crisp, sharp, circular shape. If it goes down to zero, it's a nice soft edge, which is perfect for painting click away and you come back to the screen. You've then got options to work the size. You can see how soft the shape is there. So if we go for a kind of 300 size, this is a stylus brush, which is quite a new product, but it really feels like painting, believe it or not. And you start across the top and you just brush it across the screen. Now, on the tablet computers, you quite often find that you'll be actually painting quicker than it actually appears sometimes. So just take your time with it. Once you've gone so far down, we need to make the sky get lighter as it gets lower. So we'll tap the bottom to bring the settings up, click back on the rectangular colour square. And then what we'll do is we'll lower the opacity down to about a third of the way in. Then we'll start just over the edge and we can see it's getting a bit lighter. So it's starting to fade off a little bit. We'll go back in again to the rectangular shape and we'll come right down with the opacity. Then we'll go again. And you can see it's almost fading to nothing. One more time, we start to get this really nice, almost translucent effect. 
and this is nice because that brush is so transparent that it's just putting a little tiny bit of paint on and you can really blend away the sky. If you wanted to add a few clouds and things, you simply change the colour. White is a preset colour, just at the bottom. Opacity probably about just over halfway and a smaller brush size. And you can just a little spiral of shapes and you can see how the actual cloud is starting to appear in the sky. If you want to lower the opacity some more to blend the sky, then that's perfect. Just a few sweeps below is always quite nice for the clouds as well. So the secret to using the software is, for me, the brush size and the opacity slider. That is what really makes it work. And you can do nice soft effects. If you want to get close in, more than one finger you can pinch and you can see the work nice and close. But hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight and a few tips and tricks for doing painting and drawing using a tablet computer. Now it's time for today's Art Bite feature. Let's cross over to the other side of the studio and join multi-talented artist Murray Ince and discover some basic techniques for helping you get started in pastels. Today I'd like to show you a few basic pastel techniques. The first one is a sort of drawing technique, well known for, for sketching and drawing, but Degas used it a lot in his pastel paintings, and it's basically cross-hatching. So it, you put some lines of colour. So that's hatching, and cross-hatching would be going with a different colour. So this is a dark green, and so that's two colour cross hatching. This, you know, is, is the amount of colours you use is entirely up to your, your painting, really. So it's cross hatching. Uh, with pastels, you, there's a technique called blocking in, which is when you just take a, a piece of pastel, not a full stick. Um, I generally break mine in half immediately. I get them new, break them in half, and then for blocking in, if you want to cover an area quickly, this is blocking in. So we can blend that a little bit, just to sort of push it into the surface. <sighs> Give it a blow. Don't do that when you're sitting opposite somebody in a painting uh, class or, or uh, you know, with your group, because sometimes they, they don't like it very much getting covered in pastel. Uh, two colour blending, so that, that's basic blocking in and I just blended it off, I blended it into the paper. You can soften edges with your finger so that if you want to take a, a hard edge away you can just soften it off. Useful in things like still life paintings when you want to lose the, uh, the hard edges of, of what's at the back of the painting. So for instance the leaf on, on some plants if you want to soften the edges it's a good way of blurring them and just pushing them back. Uh, so this technique when you take a pastel and rub it gently over the surface another one that's scumbling. So scumbling is a lovely sort of technique for, for building up background. If you were doing a floral painting in pastel, that'd be a good way to, to, to do a, a background if you wanted a background in there. So that's scumbling. So the, another one you can do, or another useful thing about it, is we take a colour and if you want a paler version of the colour, it may be that you've only got uh, you know, a small selection of pastels but to lighten that colour you just take your white one and you can blend into that and you can lighten the colour using a white pastel and that'll work with sort of any, any uh, colour pastel that you start with to lighten it with white but of course you can also lighten with other colours so we'll put a bit more pastel on there and this time I'll lighten it with a pale blue. So initially it might not look like a lot of difference, but we are a bit subtle with it. You see it is slightly different. Let's use a different colour. I use a complementary colour to that purple and I'll do it with a yellow. So we'll have some yellow. And again this would be a sort of technique that you could use in a, in a floral painting. 
where you can blend those together and you get nice subtle blends. Stippling is another, another useful technique. So if I do it on its own here, this is stippling. And you can find a little sharp edge and do little tiny stipples, depending on the size you're painting. If you want to do larger shapes, then you can look and you'll find a little flat area that you've created and you can stipple with bigger marks. Useful in things like, um, uh, the word will come to me, in a bluebells, you know, in a bluebell wood. So you can build up the bluebells in, in little stipple marks. You can stipple over existing colours, colours that you've put on. So uh, if we were doing a bluebell wood, start with some green, let's have some darker areas in there. Just scumble in some, some dark, and then your bluebell colour will just be put in. Your bluebells can be painted in over the top of that. So that's stippling on scumbling, you're combining the methods. This method of uh, this stippling and, and is great for doing garden scenes. So we can sort of create a few and then add a few different colours. So let's, let's have some white flowers in amongst it. Okay, so it's easy to uh, create a floral border. So those are a very few of the, of the basic techniques. There are lots of combinations uh, and the best way to learn is to experiment. It's a lovely medium. Thanks, Murray. Some nice bite-sized techniques for you to experiment with. Why not combine them and see what different finishes and textures you can create? The most important thing is to have fun and enjoy it. And remember, we're always keen to see how you get on. Why not upload examples of your work on the community section of the SAA website? Just visit SAA co.uk for details. Well folks, time for us to take a little break, but join us in part two when we go into the garden to take a closer look at the vibrant world of mixed media with colourful artist Jan Gardner. We'll see you soon. <laughs>